there are a lot of musicians in Nashville. It's Music City. And one of the interesting things about my church is there are a lot of professional musicians who attend there. And uh, I think I would describe resonant witness to those musicians as kind of an extension and a continuation of the kind of conversations that, that we often have um, at church, before church, after church, where I'll be interested to hear about what sorts of things are going on in the music industry or what happened this week at a session, and they'll be interested to hear about what kinds of things I'm talking about in a theology class uh, that I'm teaching. And, and we discover that there are things we have to learn from one another. Um, and, and that, in fact, is, is what we tried to do with the book Resonant Witness. We gathered together a group of really interesting people, uh, practicing musicians and uh, music theorists and philosophers and theologians and music historians, and had a conversation and discovered, again, that we had a great deal to learn from one another and that there were some surprising areas of convergence of interest. My chapter in Resonant Witness is about congregational song and the way that congregational song can form uh, an individual Christian or Christian communities. Um, my interest in that goes back really to um, the beginning of my, my studies in music and theology. I discovered that most of the things that were written about music and theology were written about the words of hymns rather than the music of hymns. And that makes sense. It's easier to write words about words. Um, and I like words, but I was wondering, well, what about the music? Why do we sing these things? What's the particular contribution of singing them? And um, my interest in cognitive science that I've been developing a little bit this semester is cognitive scientists have a great deal to say about the ways that bodily activities and rituals and practices shape our thinking. And so I'm, I'm interested to discover more and more about the ways that things like singing and, um, I don't know, speaking together, reciting, the kind of ritual actions that people do in worship, the ways that, that those shape our thinking. Um, that's something that Christians are aware of intuitively, that worship shapes us in a deep way. But I think it would be interesting to, to be able to articulate, I don't know, the, the, the mechanics of that a little bit more fully. To a certain extent, what I'm doing here this semester is work that I could have done in Nashville. I'm reading, I'm writing, I'm thinking. Um, but just by virtue of being here at the, uh, the Institute of Christian Worship, I'm able to have conversations with other visiting scholars. So, uh, you know, just in the little suite of offices that I occupy, there's um, Andy McCoy, who's a PhD graduate from, from St. Andrews who's doing work in um, counseling and lament and the Psalms and music. There's uh, Runa and Vigdis Ustasa who are from Norway and thinking about spiritual formation and hymnody from a, the context of the church in Norway. Uh, there's Lisa de Boer who's doing work on visual art and how that functions in church. So even just kind of the uh, the incidental conversations that we have during coffee breaks or as we're coming in and out of our office, those conversations have been enormously helpful and stimulating. Um, 